Hello, I'm Del McCurry. Good to see all you folks here. Well, you know, the first time I became aware of Olabel was, uh, it might have been in the North Carolina Ridge Runners. I, I'm not sure about that. I, uh, but there, there was a band by that name, and but mostly though, I guess I remember her mainly with her brother, Alec. Alec and Olabel and all the New River boys and girls, you know. <laughs> And they, they hosted uh, New River Ranch down in Maryland. And I saw them there probably the first time. And uh, of course then the ranch, you know, flooded there in 1972. And, and they came up to Sunset Park and they were the staff band at Sunset Park. And I played that with my band several times and got to know Ola Bell then. Of course my brother, my younger brother, he played bass with Alec and Olabel, uh, while I was, I think he was playing with them when I was working for Bill Monroe. And he knew him a lot better than I did because he worked for him, you know. And, uh, but I did get to know Olabel more than Alec, I think. I, I got to know her and I was gonna do a record and I played there at Sunset Park. And uh, just so happened, she asked me, she, she said, are you, are you gonna do a record anytime soon? And I said, yeah, I really am. And she said, could I sing you some songs, you know? And I said, yeah, but I, I, I tell you what, Old Bell, I, I probably cannot remember them without me taping them. We had, back then we had reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. I had a little one, you know, small one. And I asked her if I could uh, put her songs on tape so that I wouldn't, wouldn't forget them, you know? She said, oh, that's fine. So. I took my tape recorder and went to her house. That was on Sunday, and I went the, the following week to her house, and uh, she sang me a lot of songs, you know. Some she had written, and some were other people's songs, but she knew a lot of the old mountain numbers, you know, she did. Well, you know, it was, she was, uh, she was country, just like we were, you know. <laughs> and uh, if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> she made something for us to eat while I was there, you know. I mean, I felt right at home there, you know, it was just like being back at my mom's place, you know. <laughs> of course, she wasn't as old as my mom, but she did remind me of my mother, you know, because they were both from North Carolina and, and had the, a lot of the same traits, you know, and, and I just felt at home there. I didn't see her husband that day because he, he, he was at work, you know, but uh, I saw her and her son and he played guitar with her while she'd play the banjo and, and put these songs on tape, you know. And uh, so that's the first time I'd met her son, too, David. Yeah, David's but, actually working with the songs. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. I saw David uh, when they had that, um, oh, they had that memorial for her there in Washington, D.C. Yeah, Library of Congress. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. I saw David and talked a lot with him that day, probably more than ever, more than I ever did, you know, before. But I saw them a lot at Sunset Park. I saw them there with their band. There's so many musicians that went through that band. You know, they got their start in that band. Some of the uh, musicians from North Carolina and some local around this part of the country, you know, and over in Delaware and Maryland, you know, and PA. I know Ted Lundy went through that band and uh, Bob Paisley probably, I don't know who all went through, the, they, they trained a lot of them, you know. <laughs> and Burl Kilby was a banjo picker, and he and my brother Jerry were big buddies, you know, because they were about the same age, and brother Jerry played bass with them. And uh, at that time, the barber there in Rising Sun was playing with them too. What was his name? Uh, Deacon Brumfield. He played the dobro, you know. Yeah, so they had some good bands. High on the Mountain was one of the songs that uh, she sang for me. And she said, now you take that and you do it up in your own fashion. That's exactly the words she told me, you know. And I said, well, I want to sing it like you're singing it to me now, which I think I tried to then, but as years go by now that I sing it, and, and if I hear what I just did in the later years, it's a little bit different than the original, you know. <laughs> but it's still High on the Mountain. And that's the way she, actually, all the, probably on my record it was wrong, and everybody since then have pronounced it wrong. She said, 
high on the mountain, you know, and uh, a lot of them pronounce it high on a mountain, which is not right, you know. <laughs> but that's the way Ola Bell said it. I never forgot how she told me the title to the song, you know. I recorded I've Endured, and I recorded uh, uh, this song had two titles for some reason. It, I think we called it uh, It's Over Yonder in the Graveyard. Was, was one oh, that, that's, uh, was that's one, a different song. That's, uh, it, I don't know if that was Undone her. in Sorrow. Yeah, Undone yeah. in Sorrow, yeah. And I think that in, on my record it was titled Undone in Sorrow, yeah. But then there was more. There was a gospel number, I remember. That's been a long time ago, you know. <laughs> but I did several of her, of her songs, you know. I had, I had uh, an album ready to go, but when I heard her songs, I, I dropped some of the other songs and put hers in, you know. And, and I didn't record them all on the same record either. I recorded some later, you know. That was my first, I think that was my first Rounder album, High on the Mountain. And uh, later then I recorded uh, some of her other songs, you know, and on other labels, I think. I tell you about Ola Bell. She, she was, uh, she had a great personality. Her and her brother Alec both did, and and they were they were playing so much in those days, and they influenced so many people, you know. And and her fans always stayed with her. They always did. And I'm a big fan of Ola Bell. <laughs> she was different. Her, it's funny. Her and her brother Alec kind of had the same range in their voices, you know. <laughs> and uh, and they also play, you know, back in those days, they played the, the Jamboree and Wheeling, West Virginia, and they would play, they, sometimes they'd go to, to Wheeling and do the show on a Saturday night, or sometimes they'd do it from their store in, uh, is it Oxford or West Coast? West Oxford, yeah. And, and they'd pipe it on a telephone line out there, you know. And so they were really big in this area. They really were. They were just, uh, and a lot of it was due to Ola Bell and her personality and her songs that she brought out, you know. She was from Ashe County, I think, and, and my, my people are from Mitchell County. And, uh, but they, they talk alike, you know, and <laughs> they did. <laughs> Had the same accents, you know, and, and of course, like I said, she reminded me a lot of my mother. And my mother sang too, and played the, the piano, and played the, uh, played the harmonica, and she could play guitar, you know. And, and so, uh, Ola Bell just reminded me a lot of my mother. And, and I, I think that's why I felt so at ease around her, even though I was pretty young then, you know. But she was mother to a lot of people. You know, Sonny Miller, the fiddler, she was kind of like his mother, you know, and, and he went through that band. Great fiddle player. I mean, he was, he was one of the greats. And it's just sad that he died young, you know. He did, he died young. He was only 49 when he died. But, uh, and Slick Miller, you know, was another one that, that they, all, they all were kind of in the same band, I think, with Arthur Smith and the North Carolina Ridge Runners back in those days, you know. And I remember they had a show in uh, Wilmington, I believe. Wilmington, they had a show on there, on the radio, you know. But, uh, yeah, she's a great lady. You know, uh, Bill Monroe, I guess when he got that band together there in the 40s, you know, he, uh, he kind of set the standard with that band. And, and uh, of course, Alec and Nobel, they had a a different sound than Bill Monroe, but but for some reason, like in the 60s, Carlton Haney put on the first Bluegrass Festival, and I, I, I didn't know about it, but I did play the 66 one, the second one I played with David Grisman and um, Chris Warner and Billy Baker, you know, we played on that show. And uh, for some reason, uh, it bluegrass music really blossomed, you know, about that time. Uh, and right along with it, so did Alec Nolabelle, you know, yeah. Uh, I think they had a big part in, in 
Well, Bill Monroe could tell you that. They had a great part in music in this part of the country, you know, Sunset Park, and in Delaware, and New Jersey, and PA, and Maryland, you know. I mean, it's a big, big part of the country. Everybody knew who they were, you know, in, in, all around this area. So we owe them a lot. We really do. Her, her, her and her brother. Oh, and I recorded, I recorded one of their other brother's songs. Uh, his name escapes me now. Uh, they had another brother, and I recorded a song, Don't You Call My Name, Herb, Herb, Herb got me that song, <laughs> he wrote it, and uh, I saw him one day and he said, hey, where's my royalties at on that song? <laughs> I said, well, it ain't had time yet, Herb. <laughs> the record hadn't been out long enough, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I just now thought of that. There's probably more of those uh, of the Campbells, you know. And I, and I married a Campbell also. <laughs> but they're no kin. I don't think there's any kin. But they're the North Carolina Campbells, you know. <laughs> there's a lot of them. <laughs> you know, if she would be here today, she would have people all around her, you know. And, and she would, like if she saw a, a young kid trying to play music, She'd take, take him in with her, or her, whichever it might be, a girl or boy, and, and feed them and keep them if they didn't have a place to stay and, and, uh, and teach them how to play music, you know, and sing. And, you know, that says, says a lot about a person. She was a great person. She really was. And that's the most important part about her, you know, really. <laughs>